All right, so today we have Coach Aldero. No, know we're gonna be talking about the art of communication and how that has helped you grow a successful business and how you're able to, to help more kids at the sessions that you're at. And, you know, one of the things I want to first ask you is coaches that are doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one training and they're kind of afraid to go into a group setting, you know, what is something that from your experience, what is something that has really helped you as far as communication to, to be able to train more kids in a larger group setting that you would tell someone who's a little bit hesitant going into groups? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, something that's helped me is number one, like anything else, is just repetition. You know, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, number two is, is having a clear, clear expectations of what you want the kids to do. Cause if you don't tell them ahead of time, you know, it's not their fault that you didn't tell them the details of what you expect. Um, that's what happens most times is, is adults go to talk to kids and kids are, will be kids. And then you get mad at them because they're being kids, but you didn't tell them how to stand, how to sit, you know, what to do with the ball when, when you're talking. Um, so repetition and setting your expectations has, has helped me tremendously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are probably the two main things. Right. And when you talk about setting expectations, is that something that you're doing like right when the kids get into the gym with you? How, how do you do that? Yeah. Well, first I always, first I would always greet them, you know, make sure I go up to them, talk to them, connect, ask them questions about themselves. And then, you know, when we get together, I have them in, you know, close proximity, because if you try to talk from far away, it's like you, you want to give them a front row seat. Just like everybody knows, like when you're a kid in class, like if you didn't want to pay attention, where'd you go? Mm -hmm. Went to the back, right? So you want to make sure that they're close enough to you where, um, where when you're talking, they have to pay attention. Um, so, but yes, after the initial greeting, we would do that right away. That's the first, that's the first thing uh, we would do. And, and, you know, along with their names as well, and then expectations. Mm -hmm. And for you, because I, I don't think, most listeners know this, but how many kids do you feel comfortable training at one time? I mean, it's easily 20 to 40. 20 to 40, right. Yeah. And that's all you, you like, you can do all of that without an assistant coach, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, the only, re I mean, the only reason I say, I know I can do more. It's just, I want to make sure the lines aren't too long. Mm -hmm. when, when we do, when we do things. So it's not a matter of, uh, because we, I, I, I rent big gyms with, you know, six baskets. So there's plenty of space. It's just, I don't want to, them to wait longer, but I'm used to, when I was a phys ed teacher, I would have anywhere from 60 to 90 kids every mm -hmm. class. Um, and I would have to make sure, and we would take turns as, as teachers, like one of us would lead and one of us would kind of assist. So we would like have a microphone and so everybody can hear us. So like you were in charge of managing the kids. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you you could do it. It's just a matter of, like I said, repetition and, and setting their expectations. Once they have that down, it, you know, it's like anything. You create a system, and then the kids get used to it. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And from the parents' mindset, like like let's say they're bringing their child to a camp that you're running, a big camp or or just a big session. What do you feel like their first impression is when they walk in and? and they see you and, and they see all these kids and they see how you have just like control of the room. Like what's their, what do you think they're thinking when they see that? Um, I think they're thinking that it's something new to them because they're used to kids, you know, doing recreational programs where the kids go crazy. Um, you know, you have those, the rec workers there and they just don't have the skills to, to manage them and, even if there's like five workers, the kids are running around like crazy. So the parents, I think, instantly respect it more because you you show them that you have control over the, over the room. And every mm -hmm. parent knows, like, if you ever seen kids at a birthday party that come over one kid parents' house, is it's not easy, especially when you have to when they're younger and you have to main, you have to manage their excitement. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, I think they I think they have uh, a little bit more respect for it when they see that. Oh, wow, you know, this guy actually can, can control their behaviors on a different level than, um, you know, the local rec department or any other training that, that you see. Right. And that's a big separator for you because let's say they go to someone else's program, they have the same amount of kids there, but they have zero control. 
of the session, that parent automatically in their mind, they're, they're already looking for another trainer while they're at that session. <laughs> and, right. and a lot of that, again, I mean, it really everything's going to come down to how you communicate and the presence that you have inside the gym. So I know one of the objections that some coaches have, have told me when they are thinking of going from like, even if it's like one-on-one -on -one training to a group of five, it's, well, you know, these kids aren't going to get the same level of attention. And I don't know how I'm going to be able to help everybody at once. Like, what would you say to someone like that, that, that thinks that way about transitioning from just one-on-one -on -one training to groups? I would say, well, I mean, you could do one-on-one, -on -one, but you're going to spend all day training. Um, and especially small groups that the kids get plenty of attention. And mm -hmm. in fact, kids, kids do better with, in groups anyway, because they have somebody to, that they can look over to their left or to the right and see, okay, oh, I can, that, that's how it's done, or that's how it's not done, or, oh, that's how to act. Or when you play, you know, if you do do competitive stuff against each other, um, it helps, you know, competition always helps. But I mean, of course, you're not, they're not going to get the one-on-one -on -one attention as if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one session, but, you know, you have to ask yourself as a coach, do you want to spend each individual hour with you want to work 10 hours with 10 different kids when you can put them all in one group. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what group training is for parents know that. I mean, you're still going to go up and talk to them and fix them. But what, what I find very useful is as I'm observing the group, even if I'm not talking to one individual kid, when you see a common thread of, of, a, of a mistake, stop, bring them in. So now I'm, uh, now I am, I am giving you one-on-one -on -one attention because I just saw 60% of you doing the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. And so basically you're just observing on, on a group level. And if they, if the parents want that one-on-one, -on -one, they would have to pay a premium, you know, investment. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, of course, you're not going to give them as much time, but uh, that's, it's, it's group training. And, and parent, I think parents understand that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And there's two, I think two other things I I've seen too, in my experience is kids that are in this session they can learn from the other kids mistakes and then the kids are that are behind can learn without really even being coached they can learn about how to do it right by just oh, seeing yeah. an example to the right or to the left of them and you know i i know one of the other problems that that coaches struggle with is you know they'll, they'll tell me well it's hard to manage 20 kids at once like what if there's what if there's one kid that's just in la la land, they're not paying attention and, and they're disrupting the session. Like, how do you handle that? Well, he, that kid, that kid becomes my best friend, even if I don't want him to be my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if I'm, if I'm talking um, in a, in the group, right. Get them close. Of course, I'm going to be standing right next to him. And number one, that kid is probably also not, the most well-behaved because he's used to being in a setting where it's a free-for-all and he can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. So just by setting this, say, this is, the, this is our, this is our attention signal. This is my expectation of what you do with a ball. Most people never even tell him what to do with the ball. So a lot of 50% of his behavior is most likely it, it's not his fault because nobody told him how to act. Mm -hmm. So, so number one, what the expectations, number two, um, being, I'm his best friend. And number three, because I'm, so I'm going to give him a little bit extra attention when talking. I'm going to find a little bit good, more good that he's doing. You know, look at, let's say his name is Johnny. Look, look how nicely Johnny's standing, holding his basketball. He's making eye contact. Give Johnny two claps. Now, all of a sudden, Johnny's my friend. Now, Johnny, now Johnny just got attention the opposite way, as opposed to Johnny, sit down and shut up. You know, yeah. it's, it's still attention, but Johnny gets the, oh, shit, I'm, I'm, I'm the good kid now. So if you give a kid a good reputation, to, to, uh, a good reputation, they'll live up to it. Most, most teachers and coaches, they know Johnny's a problem, so instantly they have negative, negativity towards him. Correct. Um, so if you give a kid a bad reputation, they're going to be like, all right, yeah, I'll be that. But if you mm -hmm. find the good in them and you give them a little bit more attention, because that's really what they want. They want to be, they want to be seen. Yep. So, yep. I mean, that's, that's normally what it comes down to. Of course, there's always kids that are paying the ass, and, but – pretty much a lot of people have kind of written them off as, you know, the bad kid, mm -hmm. but you can do most time, most times, and I'm not saying all times, but most times you could do a little bit more 
better on your end to get them on your side and make them a leader too. Correct. Cause, cause he wants to, he really, he, he wants the eyes. If he's, if he's misbehaving, he wants the, the eyes of the, of the crowd. So give mm-hmm. him the eyes, but give it to him in a, in a positive light. And you as the leader can spin it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it, it kind of makes me think too, if, if you're right next to the kid, there's, there's more there. I, I don't want to say there's more pressure, but he, he knows he can't get away with anything if you're right, right next to him. Um, and also once you start giving him some praise, he, that probably completely switches how he's thinking. And he's like, man, I don't want to let this guy down now. Yes. And, yeah. and so, because he's not used to that at school, because I'm sure at school, he's sitting in the very back. He's probably just like mm-hmm. throwing stuff at his friends, mm-hmm. um, constantly getting in trouble, constantly going into detention, um, constantly getting yelled at by his parents. Uh, and so that's where like your environment at the end of the day, it can, it can change that type of person to start becoming more obedient. Um, and you, the, the cool thing about that is you can do that and still run your session. Like it's not, it's not like you're stopping your session for 30 minutes to, to punish this kid. It's like, you're able to just like quickly, you know, say something and, and continue with your session. Right. Yeah. You can, and you can literally do, do what you just did with like, it's like when you just snapped your finger, mm-hmm. like if I'm, I'm talking like this and all of a sudden I see the kid talking, I go like this to him. I can even tell them before a session, if, Hey, if you see me do this to you, that means, that means cut it out. Or if I, if I blink at you twice like this, that's like, you know, cut the shit. Cause so, cause I want to keep rolling. I don't want to have to, you know, stop everything for you. Mm-hmm. Cause the other kids didn't, if the other kids are listening and like, especially when there's parents around, you don't want to, you don't want to lose your shit on a kid. Cause it makes you look, even if the kid, even if it's warranted, like you cause then it makes you look bad. It makes you look like you don't have control over your emotions. Even if the kid's like, you know, I'm sure the parent, most parents would most likely flip freak out if it was at you know their house or a pool party and the kid was mm-hmm. just going nuts. But if you can show, if the parent can see, oh, this kid's about to, this kid is misbehaving and you just handled it so smoothly. Again, you, it, you just raise the level of your, of your expertise. Cause if you can't, if you can't, if you can't manage their behaviors, then it doesn't matter how much, you know, because, mm-hmm. because they're not, they're not listening to you. Mm-hmm. So it goes, listen, it goes manage and listen first. And then, okay, that's awesome. You know, a bunch of information, but you mm-hmm. got to get them, you got to get them engaged in a fun, in a fun disciplined way not just right. you know drill sergeant way because there's yeah. a way to do there's a way to do both mm-hmm. and the way the thing i like about what you're saying is you're not like you're not like coaching and reacting it's like you are you have your plan like if something pops up it's like it's it's happening it's like second nature for you and you just like carry on and i know the the really the big thing in this business is like are kids having fun? Do they, do they leave your session with a smile? Like, have they gotten better? And then what is the first thing that they tell their parents once they get into the car? That, that to me is what mm-hmm. keeps players in the program. But I also know if parents are watching, they can make those judgments in their mind too. Yeah. Like when they're just sitting there watching, seeing what's happening. And, and I know if someone loses control of the session, that parent, again, they're going to go find someone else. But, you know, if the kid has a bad experience, right when they get in the car, they're going to tell their parent. And, you know, kids now are, are d- dictating their parents' decisions, which right. is kind of crazy to me. Uh, but that's that's how this business is. And, you know, what would you tell a coach who, like, they, they want to go and start doing more stuff in groups, right? It's like they have it on their mind. They're, they're getting burned out with private training right now because we've already talked about you, you can only work with one kid per hour. And I struggle with that personally in my business many years ago. Um, but what would you tell this coach who, you know, they want to get their feet wet with uh, doing some group training? Like what is like one, like one or two solid tips that you can give them to hopefully give them some confidence to go into group training, like something tactical that they can do at the actual session. Yeah. So I would say number one, just gradually add kids in. So if you're, if you're comfortable with one, go to three, 
if you're comfortable, when you're comfortable with three, go to, you know, go to five, you know, eventually go to, you know, just build up to whatever number you're comfortable in that, that makes sense. Cause there's also a factor of, mm-hmm. um, you know, what's the space I have. Cause of course you can't just have like a hundred kids in a little tiny space. Mm-hmm. So you want it, you, you don't want it to be like ridiculous. Cause you know, the factors of waiting online comes into play. You don't want long lines because most camps or clinics or recreation department, they'll have a kid, they'll do the same thing. And everybody's waiting on this giant long line. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying to have a part to, have to do it to the point where, um, you know, it affects the quality of the session and how long they're waiting. So number one, gradually add kids. Number two, make sure you have um, attention signals down, you know, whether it's clapping two times or when I say a certain word, if I say Ben, the kids say neighbors, right? And then mm-hmm. just it, it gets them engaged. Um, I like to do something called uh, like whole brain teaching too. So whole brain teaching, is, have you heard of this? No, I haven't. Okay, so, so whole brain teaching is when you get the kids to use their words and their actions, because when you tie in a word with actions, um, they remember it better. So let's say I say, and it's, this is going to like younger kids. Mm. Okay, so like, and I'll tell, you'd say to the kids, okay, whatever I do and say, you have to mimic me. So let's say I say step one, and they do the same thing with their hand, step one. So I do it, they repeat it back, right? One position. And they say one position, two position. And as, as I'm right after I say it, they're yeah, repeating it. it. That's then, cool. And then they have to teach it to the person next to them. Mm-hmm. Because when, cause you, you know as well as anybody that when you teach it, you get to learn it twice. Yep. So then now they're going to they're gonna learn it so well that they can teach it to the person next to them. So that's, that's just another, that's more so of a teaching mechanism, not so much a, a management one, but so add, gradually add kids, have attention signals where if you say one thing, the kids say it and, or they can do an action back. And number, and number three is um, if you do some type of like cold brain teaching thing where it gets them involved with their, with their words and actions, um, that really engages the group tremendously, especially on a younger kid level. On older kids, you probably won't have to do that. But if you deal with younger athletes, because most, most trainers and coaches are afraid to go younger because they're like oh i don't know pay attention right i don't pay attention but but if you have the systems in place and they're not too too young they will as long as you let they know what to do as long as like they you can do it now you've just you know you've just added three to four grade levels into your system because if you have the Mm -hmm. strategies you know now you can create a whole nother group of of those of those younger ones Yep. Now you now you get instead of starting when in middle school, you start them in elementary school, and now they're a client for, for longer on. You just change the, you know how you how you teach the session. Middle school kids, you can talk to more like an adult. Obviously, high school kids, but with those elementary school kids, you can place put into place these certain strategies. Because um, I know that's what most people are afraid of: is the younger kid, large group. How do I control mm-hmm. that? And that's mm-hmm. when you have to have your systems down um, the most. So those, I think, are some some really good strategies. Yeah, no, that's that's really good. Yeah, because I think one of the the things that I've on my end that I've learned is like when I teach something to a kid, if I could explain it so well to them and just do it so step by step, but if they don't say it out loud, I don't feel like they've truly gotten it. And that's yeah. why one of the things I've always done is, you know, when I, when I teach something to a player, I have them go teach it back to their parents. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I that's know great. that there's a different, there's a different level of, of, I would say engagement when a kid can go, whether they're teaching it to their teammate or their parents, it's like, once they, once they do that, they get it. And then from the parents' point of view as well too, they can see, wow, like my son's really learning um right really that that can apply to any age um a question i have for you though is like with kids that are younger um these elementary school kids when they're at your session and let's say that you know for some reason there's just multiple kids that day that are they're being a pain in the butt Mm -hmm. um you're not because i I just want to make sure you're not like telling everyone to stop and, and have them go run or do push-ups, like you're not doing that, right? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say, uh, 
I think you do need to redirect at times. So let's say you're mm-hmm. talking and we're all standing up. And anytime a kid who's under the age of like 10 is standing with a ball, you're giving them a, to- a, a tool to distract themselves yeah. and everybody else. Yeah. So how do they hold the ball? How do you want them to hold the ball? Where are their feet? Where are they standing? you got to tell them that. But I, don't, I think when it, at times it, it will get to a certain point. You have to redirect them instead of yelling. Because if there's multiple kids, let's say you're talking, there's multiple kids talking while you're talking. First, I mean, they should know the standard. So check, check to see if you did, you know, you, you set the standard for them. What do mm-hmm. they do when you're talking? Number two, if they are, if there is a, a, a good number of kids, try to compliment somebody who is, is doing the right thing. Usually that will work, especially if it's right next to the kid, you know, Johnny, who's a pain in the ass. And if you do need to redirect, you would say, all right, everyone sit down real quick. Who can tell me why did I sit you down? Oh, because we were talking. Great, stand up. But it's so, it's very fast. Right. Or, like I said, the, the, the point where most kids, they, they, they struggle to stand up and hold the ball. They can't stand still. Um, they can't tuck it in and hold it. You sit though, you can sit the when you're talking with those kids, you sit them down, crisscross applesauce, how they call it in kindergarten. They take their hands, they lock it up over the ball. This is the expectation one. So you might have to do that. Sometimes you, sometimes I do do that with you if they're really little, like you have to sit them down and talk to them as opposed to when they're a little bit older, they stand up mm-hmm. and hold the ball. But just those little details can, can make or break how it's going and the level um, that they're paying attention. So, you, so to answer your question, sometimes you have to stop and redirect, but you want to have it so tight that you don't have to mm-hmm. do that. Ideally, when you have that usually happens if there's new kids, like let's say you always do clinics with younger kids and there's like one or two new kids that doesn't really know you and they, they don't know the expectations that well, they, they, you, they might need a little bit of redirecting in terms of like everybody and just review it. So I wouldn't be afraid to do it, but just make it quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It kind of, it's kind of making me laugh in my mind because I've talked to so many coaches who they'll, they'll, when they talk about going from like one-on-one training to group training, the, I think the big thing that they have in their, the big fear they have in their mind is like the lack of control that they'll have with kids, but you go as deep to tell someone how to stand. Right. And if you think about it though, that, that prevents problems from happening is when kids have clear instruction like that. Cause like in soccer, for example, like kids always have the ball at their feet. And I yeah. remember very vividly, there was a, this happened a long time ago, but I was doing a clinic and I did not tell the kids how to stand. I just thought, you know, because they, they were a little bit younger. I think they were like 10 to 13. Um, but I was just like, all right, we're doing another clinic. Like, I don't need to go into that depth. That's what I was thinking. And mm-hmm. this boy, he kept like, he was standing in the back. He kept putting both of his feet on top of the ball he was trying to balance oh, <laughs> and it was wet and it was wet that day yeah, and i looked so. back and like originally when i looked back i was like ah, i'm not gonna say anything i just kind of like blew it blew it off and then like he kept doing it and then like it was distracting me so i i said something yeah and i didn't tell him though what i wanted him to do i just told him to stop doing what he was doing yeah okay. now what do you think happened to that kid you know, five minutes later. I hope he fell. <laughs> he did. I, I hope he did. <laughs> he did. Well, the thing that's the thing that's funny about it is he did. And I looked at it, the whole situation, especially now when we're talking about this, the whole situation could have easily been handled by me at the beginning of the session right. before we even like touch the soccer balls. Right. And that's that's one of the things too, because I remember after that, it discouraged me. I was like, gosh, I don't even want to do these clinics anymore. Mm-hmm. Cause it was embarrassing. Cause like that, when that happened, all the kids saw it and it took away from the session. And I let that one kid take, you know, he basically dominated the session. Cause when I was talking, I was thinking about him. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it'll, that's what it'll do to you. Yeah. And it just completely ruined it. Um, and you know, if, if I had talked to you, <laughs> before I ran that clinic <laughs> and I went through, you know, the information you have in your course um, that we're going to talk about here in a second, like that, that would have completely fixed that. And I, I could give you so many other examples of, 
of times where kids, you know, I, I looked at it as punishment versus teaching. Mm -hmm. I, I would, I would punish kids and just be annoyed with it versus, you know, as a coach, how can I just lead here and, and set the tone and set the expectation to eliminate these problems from happening? I would just, I was so reactive all the time. Right. Um, so what was, you know, when you think about the course that you have that, that you've created, I guess, what was the, the thing that you're thinking about as far as like, you know, why, why did you create this for coaches that are, that are wanting to go into group training? Like, what was the main reason why you, you put all the time uh, and effort into it? I would say a lot of what you're, what you're saying with the uh, coaches who they only do, like, I only do one-on-one -on -one training. I mean, that sounds great when it's like you're doing a little side hustle and, and you want to make some extra money, but like, if you really want to grow like your business, you, you're going to, you're going to have to do group training. Mm -hmm. um, you can't, you unless you have a lot of coaches under you, you can't possibly train, you know, you're not going to want, what's the point of working? You might as well go work for somebody else if you're going to work that, that many hours. Right. So you want to mm -hmm. optimize your time. So that was, that was one of them, um, you know, optimizing your time, uh, generating more, more income and in, in less time. Um, and it doesn't mean, and people, sometimes people take that as like, you know, you shouldn't, the amount of kids shouldn't affect the quality of right. the session. As long as it doesn't affect the quality of how you're communicating and, and what the kids are getting out of and how active they are, then there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing immoral about that. You know, they're all getting the same great experience. Um, as long as obviously you don't take it to the level where they're waiting online too long or, mm -hmm. you know, something like that, or there's just not enough space. Um, and because I know some coaches are, they're afraid of the, the young ones. They don't want to deal with the young ones, but the young ones can be a lot of fun. You just have to implement the strategy. You just, you just can't assume that they know something mm -hmm. you gotta, you got to assume like they you act like they're, they're a kid who was raised by wolves. You don't, cause you don't know what the parents have taught them. The right. parents might be, yeah, here's an iPad. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to go in the kitchen. Like you don't know what they, they don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. So, and in school, they don't know if their teacher is disciplined. There's a lot of teachers who are undisciplined. So don't tell them expectations. You don't know if their local rec department is disciplined. So they're just doing what they normally do. So I know coaches are afraid of that younger group, but you're, you're eliminating a whole genre, even if you just do clinics once in a while. So, you know, I know they can do it. It's just a matter of there's certain strategies. Like I've learned over, you know, 15 years from being a phys ed teacher. Like I said, dealing with the 60 to 90 kids, I had no choice, but to be really good and tight with my management. Cause then all of a sudden, like the principal will come in and observe me and yep. I had to do a good job. So like I had no choice because I didn't want to be miserable at, at, you know, at work at the time, but like their skills that I was, I'm thankful that I did that because there's a lot of skills I learned that I had to learn. And I messed up over the years that I just, Oh, wow. Every year I picked up something new. So I just think coaches are missing out on, on generating, you know, more income and helping more kids because they're afraid. I don't know if I can control them or I don't want to deal with those little kids. Little kids are great. If you have the strategies. In place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I, when I, when I think about what you're talking about, I mean, I also look at the impact of saying one thing that 20 kids can hear versus saying one thing that only one player can hear. Right. And I'll never forget um, this. This was like a very vivid memory that I have, but I remember in 2011, that was like the first really busy summer I think that I had. And it was all one-on-one -on -one training. And I did like a, I think I did a couple of clinics, like group clinics, but everything I was doing mostly was one-on-one -on -one training. And I remember I was having uh, lunch with my dad and he could see how tired I was. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he's like, son, you're not going to be able to do one-on-one -on -one training as like a sustainable thing. And he went on to tell me, uh, like he did some like private tennis training when he was, uh, I guess when he was in his twenties and he, he said like, he'd be out there doing one-on-one -on -one training and those days were so long and he, he burned out. He did it for like two years and he was like, you have to find a way to do this in groups. He was like, you, you just, you're not going to be able to have enough time during the day to do this one-on-one. -on -one. And I remember when he said that it was so funny. I was so stubborn. 
I was like, I was like, no, like I'm going to do one-on-one training for a long time. <laughs> Cause, Cause I wasn't, even though I was tired that summer, I, I was young and I, I could get away with it. But I remember the next summer did the same thing. And I was like, dude, I should have listened to my dad. <laughs> and, and that's when I kind of went down the road of learning more about, you know, some of the stuff you're talking about, but I had to switch my mindset because a lot of coaches that do one-on-one training, they think that is the best way to train kids. And I had to really change my mind when I started doing more groups. I realized like, wow, like I have more energy at this session. Like I can say one thing and 10 kids can hear this. So that what I say has a bigger impact. Mm-hmm. And then we talked about this at the beginning, but when kids are in a group session, I, I think it's more competitive. They can learn mm-hmm. better from each other. And it's, it's in an environment that I feel also too, it can be more game specific than one-on-one training. Um, so I know for me, that's something I learned early on. And, you know, when you talk about, because I want to try to put some context on this. So like when you talk about making more money per, let's say for a clinic, like if you have, let's say you have 25 kids at a clinic, how much income does that bring in for, for the business? If you have 25 kids that just come to a standard clinic that you have on like Memorial day something like that. At least, at least a thousand dollars. Right. So at least a thousand bucks. So, you know, most people out there that are watching this video or they're, they're, you know, on YouTube, I don't think I've ever made a thousand dollars. And how, how long does it take to make the thousand dollars? Like how much time are you in the gym? For that uh so if i do uh usually my clinics like on days off from school or something like two hours two hours so, so the, the investment will be anywhere from 50 to 65 dollars uh sometimes it's a little bit more sometimes people add a little bit more because like they can do like a shooting breakdown they can add mm-hmm. it to their like where i video their shot and like you know i analyze their shot so um yeah it's about it's about two hours but obviously you know it's not just two hours because you got to plan it you got to drive there you got to set up so it's, it's more than that. So it, you know, depending on how far away it could be anywhere from, you know, if it's right down the road, it could be two and a half hours. If it's a little drive, it might be three hours, three and a half mm-hmm. hours, but you know, it's a lot better than doing 25 one-on-one sessions and, right. you know, all, all day or even 10, like, yeah. and again, it's, as long as you, I don't want anyone to sacrifice the quality the quality the quality because that's not what you know a lot of people some people might take it like that like oh you're just trying to make a bunch of money and cope well like, <laughs> like of course everybody's trying to generate income but they're right. still getting those kids are still learning and getting better in fact larger groups creates a lot more energy there like the kids when kids see more kids there it's like oh this is this is awesome when parents see more kids there now as long as it doesn't go over the threshold of what would be you know good for that size space and your mm-hmm. ability to handle it. Um, as long as it's not over that limit, I, th- every, I think the parents are like, wow, other people are doing this. This solidifies my investment. Like this was a good idea. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it, you know, as long as you can develop the skills to manage and, and handle, um, manage to communicate and teach them, then it's, it's going to be great for your, for your business. Or, you know, even if you're like, you know, a teacher who wants to learn how to, if you're a phys ed teacher who wants to learn how to manage kids and this, it, it's good for them too. Mm-hmm. camp counselor, you know, it does, it doesn't matter. It's, or if you involve with kids and um, being the leader of the group, this, you know, I, th- this will help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even if someone already has a lot of kids that they're training, they're going to be able to learn so much from the knowledge that you have in, in the course. What, what do you think the end result of the course is if a coach you know, invest the time they go through it. They, cause like, I've been, I've been through it personally. Like I already know, but I kind of want people to hear from you. Like what, what it should be the end result for someone who goes through the material that you have. Right. So the course is it's, there's a video, there's a video portion and there's also an ebook portion. So if you want to read it, you can read it. If you want to listen to the videos and watch the videos, you can, um, the end result will be you being able to work with more kids, you being able to save time, you be able to generate more income, enjoy what you do more, because if you, if you're not enjoying it, you know, what's the point. And the reason I say enjoy it, because 
the kids are going to, it'll be like a well-oiled machine, especially when you see the kids more than once, yeah. they know exactly what to expect from you. Mm -hmm. So not only are you saving time, you're earning larger income, you're making a bigger impact. You know, you're, you're enjoying it more because you have the systems in place and you're going to feel more confident, you know, uh, teaching. Well, Matt, and being able to set, Matt, I always say management because no matter what, when you're dealing with kids, you have to manage their behaviors, large groups of kids. If you're dealing with a couple middle school kids, you probably won't have to, like they're old enough. Or, but if you're dealing with more, more than 10 kids, you're going to have to have some management skills in there. So you're going to enjoy what you're doing more on top of, of everything else and learn, you know, things that I messed up for years and years and years that I learned in a very short amount of, amount of time. Mm -hmm. Right. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah. And I know there's going to be a link right below this video where people can go check that out. Awesome, man. Um, is there anything like, I guess, before we go, is there one last kind of piece of advice you would give to a coach that is wanting to improve their communication? Um, yeah, I would say, number one, rewatch this video um, more than more than once. Number two, don't be afraid to, to try to get in front of more groups of, of kids. If you're not comfortable enough receiving, like, let's say you're just starting out and you never even dealt with a large group. I would say um, video yourself and see, you know, see how you come across, talk to talk in the mirror, you know, as silly as it sounds. Once you're comfortable doing that, do something for free. You contact some, the PTA, come in and be like, Hey, I want to do a free clinic and get this. It's for this many kids and it's free for you. That's, that's a way to practice it. Um, but yeah, you got to put yourself out there and it's like anything else. You got to, you got to put in the reps to do it. Uh, Rewatch this video. You know, if you get the course, you're going through it one time is not going to help. You got to go through it 10 to 15 times because, you know, repetition is the mother of skill. So the more you do it and then you apply it, the more you read it, you apply it, um, you'll get, you'll get better at it mm -hmm. fast. You, if, as long as you put in the, the reps, it's like, it's like anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love the concept of like filming yourself and watching it back. Cause I know a lot of people aren't, it's not that they wouldn't th think to do that. It's, it's, they're too stubborn in their own mind. They think how they mm -hmm. do it is good. And then they, and then when they go back and question, well, how was that? They don't know because th they can't mm -hmm. see it. Right. Um, and I think that is such an important thing to be able to practice in front of the mirror and like rewatch something that you've done. So you can like actually have like real data right in front of you and you can see everything. Um, cool, man. Awesome. Well, Hey, thanks for jumping on today. Uh, I know this is very valuable for the coaches that are wanting to a make more money with, with what they're doing and, and have a bigger impact on the kids that, that they serve and save time. And uh, thanks so much for jumping on here. And, and we'll put that link uh, right below this video. Awesome. Man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Man. All right. You got it.